Hi, welcome to CEO Check-In. Hope you're having a great Wednesday. I am excited to see CEOs from across the country who jump on to say hello and talk about how we can scale faster. And if you're with us live, that's great. If you're watching later on tonight or some other day, that's also great. Feel free to join us live sometime. I'm going live Mondays and Wednesdays at 12 noon Eastern. Hey, Rabia. Hey, Bianca. Hey, Asa92. Um, so today I am thinking about genius work, which is the work that you love to do and that you would do even if you weren't paid for it. And I'm thinking about it today because I'm actually doing what I consider my genius work, which is taking a lot of complicated information and turning it into something fairly easy to understand and learn. I'm working on my new Million Dollar Women Coach Certification Program. And I love having this time blocked off on my calendar. I have two four-hour blocks. Yesterday was one and today is the second one where I'm working with the person who I designed my courses with. We're brainstorming. We're coming up with the images and the templates and how it's going to get taught. And I just love it. And so it reminded me that when we start our businesses, it's because we think we're really good at doing something and we want to do more of it. But then very quickly, we can get bogged down in doing the accounting and figuring out the social media and answering customer emails and all the things that take up the day. So my go big tip today is to focus on your genius work. And what I mean by that is carve out time every week to spend a couple of hours on the reason you started your business in the first place because that's really where you're gonna come up with the big new ideas that are gonna drive your business forward. Peter Drucker, the famous management consultant guru, said that business is really just two things, innovation and marketing. So innovation only happens when you have the time to sit and think about, hey, am I still serving my customers and clients in the right way? Are there new marketing tools I could use? Are there new ways of interacting with people that I've noticed other people doing maybe I could adopt? So focus on your genius work is take the time to just say, okay, these two hours, I'm going to just do the part I love. And it might feel super decadent because there's emails piling up in your inbox and so many other things that need doing. But it might also be a wake-up call that to do your genius work, you need to hire a virtual assistant, right? Or if you already have an assistant, maybe you need to expand your team. If you can't make the time to do your genius work, and welcome if you're just joining us, I'm talking about how focusing on your genius work is one of the key things you need to do in order to go big. And if you're not able to do that, if you can't carve out a couple of hours every week to think about how you can innovate, to come up with interesting marketing ideas, then you probably need more help in your business. Uh, in the business world, we always like to say that if you're doing something an assistant can do, then you are the assistant, right? Even though you're the CEO of the company, you are the assistant if you're doing work you could pay someone 15 to 25 hour, dollars an hour to do. And I know that in these times where a lot of businesses have slowed down and you're worried about, well, where is my next sale going to come from? I'm not saying rush out and hire a team of 10, but if you're finding you're not even able to do the work anymore that generates the exciting part you love and brings clients to you, then yeah, maybe you do need to hire a virtual assistant for a few hours a week just to do some of that busy work so that it can free you up. This is one of the main things we teach in my Million Dollar Women Masterclass is how to go from being the doer to being the leader. And that's really one of the biggest transformations that we see happen in our program is that women come in running their businesses where they're still doing so much of the work themselves. And we teach them how to outsource and delegate and create that precious time to do their genius work. It makes you happier because you get to do the stuff that you love and you also build a repeatable system. Whereas if it's you doing everything, frankly, that's got a short runway, right? Because eventually you're gonna become the bottleneck, you're gonna burn out. We see this with so many women coming to us. They're so smart, they're so good at what they do, but they're burned out because they're doing everything themselves. And I know a lot about this because that was me when I had my language teaching company, Little Pim, I was you know, fixing the broken links on the website and I was ordering the product and I was answering the customer service emails and it wasn't until I learned how to hire people for each of these roles 
and focus on the things that would really drive the company forward, like innovation and marketing, that we were able to get up into the seven figures in revenues. All right, well, I hope some of that resonates. Hey, Lori, and um, I'm excited to go live. We often have guests on Wednesdays. We don't have a guest this Wednesday, so we have more time for live coaching, which is great. And next Wednesday, we have a venture capitalist coming on who focuses on leveling the playing field by investing in diverse entrepreneurs. So if you're thinking about raising capital or you've just sort of wondered, like, how does a VC think and what are they looking for? This will be a great chance to learn more about that. So mark your calendar for a week from today. And today we're going to get to go live with some folks, maybe some folks we haven't heard from before. I see Naeem. I see Ms. Jacqueline. If somebody would like to go live, send me a little note. And if not, I will just pick someone. And if you send me a little note, I will get it. And then if I'm live with someone else, you can and the things we talk about when I coach are everything from sales to strategy to pricing to partnerships to marketing in this new normal, whatever will help you to keep your business growing and thriving. No question is too big or too small for CEO check-in. Um, all right, great. We're waiting to see if Lori wants to go live. Lori is a coach and works with women entrepreneurs as well in upstate New York. And I think she's changing her business model right now, as so many people are, to one that is more virtual and that can reach more people. She's in our masterclass program and is busy scaling up her community for women entrepreneurs. We're excited for her. Um, let's see. I don't know if her internet is behaving today to let us do that. So we're going to see what is going on with Bianca. Last we left off with Bianca, she was trying some big new things in her business. We'd love to hear where that went. And if you want to go next, then uh, hi. Hi. Hi, Bianca. How are you? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I was just saying that everybody who's with us, if you want to go next, just send me a little request. And uh, But let's hear from Bianca. Nice to see you. How's your Wednesday going? My Wednesday's going nice. I woke up early and went on a nice long hike with my dog this morning. Oh, what a great way to start the day. Yeah, it was very humid, so I'm glad to be home in my air conditioning. I was just going to ask you, because I went running this morning in Central Park, and it was, like, super heavy, like, muggy. It was only 79 degrees, but I felt like, you know, you could cut the air with a, I with know. a butter knife. <laughs> yeah, it's gross outside. <laughs> yeah, good day to be inside doing CEO check-in, right? Yes, I love CEO yeah. check-in. I have an alarm set on my phone for every Monday and Wednesday at 12 o'clock. Oh, that's, uh, that's fantastic. Time. I'm so happy to hear that. Well, I always yeah. love you come on. I think I called you my co-pilot at the reunion. Yes, <laughs> I was so honored. <laughs> yeah, well, I know I can count on you. I love it. And it's fun, you know, also seeing your business grow and change in real time. You know, I think everyone can relate to all the things you've been talking about on here, how to serve customers at a higher level, how to automate your business, how to launch new products and services you've maybe never done before. So maybe just introduce yourself because we have a bunch of new people here today. Sure. And then we want to hear what's going on and how I can help. Yeah, sure. My name's Bianca, and I'm the owner. I'm a certified personal trainer and the owner of Body Positive Bootcamp. Uh, Body Positive Bootcamp offers all virtual classes and virtual fitness classes and virtual personal training. And right now, one of the things I'm trying to do is obviously to scale up and fill my classes. And I've spent some money to implement a new marketing campaign with Facebook ads, and um, I'm I am getting some leads in my pipeline, but. Um, I'm not getting as many leads as I would like to have uh, is I'm wondering, you know, where are all the people who want to do fitness at home? I know this is a, an industry that is kind of blowing up at the moment because of coronavirus and gyms being closed. I was just wondering if you have any ideas, like how can I fill my pipeline with more potential prospects and so that I can implement the sales cure now that I Yes. And, and you, have you closer. been using the sales cure on some of your calls? Oh, yes. I have my steps on post-its in front of my desk. Awesome. C U R E, And I am, I have a most bold post-it here that says close deals. Love that. Yes. Awesome. And so how's that going? Because we talked last time about how, and of course, I want to help you find more leads. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But the two keys to sales, right, are having consistent leads and then knowing how to close the leads. Right. And so last time, I remember you were feeling a little demoralized because you're like, well, I have like 90, you know, people who want to talk to me, but I only closed, you know, three. I forget the numbers exactly. But when we broke it down, you'd really only have like 10 phone calls. Right. So actually, the close rate wasn't that bad. And we decided to get your close rate improved 
so that everybody you talk to, there was a higher chance of closing. So what has changed since then? Let's start with that and then we'll go to the leads. My confidence has gone up so much since I've taken the sales cure, just because now I have a process. I'm not going into it with no script, literally. I'm so happy to hear that. You literally have a script, right? You wrote yes. a script. Yes, I literally have a script and I'm not, I'm obviously not reading from it. I'm very much uh, trying to be very conversational so that yes. people trust me and I'm not just this skeezy salesperson, but having the lines on my computer there for me to pick up like an index card has helped me to lead, lead the conversation so much more. And I've noticed that the phone calls are significantly longer now in time. But are they closing? Is the question. <laughs> You're more I, confident. My, They're longer, but are they signing up? And if not, I yes, want to help you. <laughs> I, I have, it's not a great close rate. Let's see. Um, my, my close rate is 7.84%. Can we round up to 8%? Not yes. great. Yes, well, I'm glad you're tracking it. Bravo for tracking it. That's Thank important, you. right? What we measure is what grows. And you're getting a shout out from Rabia saying, great efforts, Bianca. Thank you, Rabia. Yes, we're cheering you on. Well, the thing about the sales cure, you know, like any new method you learn, it takes a little while, right, to master it mm -hmm. and to understand the nuances of it and feel super confident and comfortable. So I always say, like, you should expect to have, like, 10 calls where you're just kind of like, oh, I don't know. And then it clicks in. You know, I've seen it happen with so many people where it's like, oh, I get it now, right? I mean, I've had thousands of calls and I know that moment where I'm like, yeah, this person needs me, you know, because there's that part of the call where you're tapping into, you know, really how big is their pain? That is the question at the end of the right. day, whether you're selling fitness training, you know, scaling coaching. Uh, I talked to a woman this morning who helps people build their sales funnels. So if someone has smallish pain, right, then they're not going to pay a lot of money to fix it. And they're not in a huge rush to fix it. Right. But if you can identify big pain that they have, and then also show them how if they don't fix it, it's just going to get worse, because people do tend to delude themselves and think it'll get better, right? Right. And that's where your job as a sales trained salesperson comes in, right, is to say, well, you know, hey, well, what if this happens? Well, just gently guide them, right? You're not kind of finger wagging like, no, you're not going to get in shape without me, right? Okay. But it's sort of like like if, if they say, well, you know what? I've been thinking like, well, I shared you with you my experience, right, that I went running in Florida one Christmas break, and I was like, everything's jiggling. What's up with that? Like, this, right. this, I, this is not my self-image. I don't want things jiggling. My thighs were jiggling. It was like, I am just not in the best shape of my life. Right. So if I'd gotten on a call with you, right, and you were like, well, why are you calling? And I said, well, things are jiggling. I really don't like that. So my delusion is, but you know what? Like, probably if I just keep working out or I eat less or something, like, it'll just get better on its own. That's right. most people's delusion, right? Sure. So what the sales cure taught you, and this is where you're just going to get better and better at it, is like when you hear, oh, wait, there's some pain there. She didn't like that jiggly thing, right? To go deeper into it, right? And say, okay, well, how, why is that a problem for you? Right. right. And, and then what's going to happen if you don't fix it? And then there's that magic moment where you realize, oh, this really matters to this person. Yeah. And that's when it's like, okay, can I help you fix this? Would you like to hear how we fix this for people? So where do you think... Where's the disconnect? Like the people you didn't close, enroll, what do you think happened? Well, one person really didn't like that I don't have like a nutrition aspect component to the service. Okay. Um, and I simply just said, well, that's not something that's a part of the package. You get this and this and this. Right. So they, they just thought. Right. They, they may be looking for something this. else, right? Um, but I, I'm wondering, Julia, if there's some sort of absurdity going on where maybe is it possible that my package is underpriced and people are undervaluing it? Or is that like a psycho psychological thing that happens? Is it too affordable? I don't know because I don't know your space well enough. If you're competitive with others, which I believe you said you were then I don't think that's the big problem. Okay. Are you actually asking them to enroll? Because I do see sometimes people do the whole sales cure, but they get to the part where it's like, okay, well, let's get you signed up. And they are uncomfortable with that part and they don't do it? Or do you do that? I do that. And I try to close on the phone. You know, I say, okay, let's, you know, why don't you put me on speakerphone? We'll get you signed up. And then yes. the most important part after you pay is for me to teach you how to sign up for classes. So I try to take yeah. them through the process I like on the that. phone. Thank you. 
And um, it's worked, but some people are like, oh, I, they give me excuses. And I, I, I suppose that my main struggle is overcoming objections because maybe I'm just being too nice. People are like, oh, I have to talk to my husband or, you know, I have to check my budget. And um, I, I think that's the one part where my confidence isn't strong enough yet. Oh, I'm really glad you identified that. And that is a huge pain point for most people trying to use this method, you know, sales cure. Of, really sales cure gets you from hello to yes on one call, right. right? But it does mean you have to master overcoming objections, yes. which is part of what you learned in Sales Cure. And that's something that really, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. I know yes. that for the first couple of years I was using Sales Cure after, before every phone call, I would look at a note I had in my computer that just said objections on it. And I would reread all the objections and all the answers that I would give just so that I wanted to have that feeling that when someone said, well, you know what, I need to check with my husband, that it didn't throw me for even one minute. Right? right, it didn't even feel like an objection. It was just like, oh, okay, yeah, I know what to say when you say that. For sure. Right? So I think definitely to do some work around that, what else were you gonna share? I think one of the things that I learned from you on our first call when, when we were signing up for the um, masterclass was, you know, I think I said to you, you know, Julia, let me, let me just like think about it. And you said, no, Bianca, you signed up for this call. I think you're ready. That's the same thing for my clients. They're signing up for, for my fitness challenge. If they're going to go so far as to make a phone call appointment with me, they probably are ready to make a change with their fitness. So I just need to. And let's take out probably. Right? You're right. They are ready. You're they right. are ready, right? And this is yeah. part of the prep before every call that we recommend in sales care. You know, those, those few minutes when you set your intention before every call, remember that like they've been in pain for a long time and, and it's enough pain for them to reach out to you. Right? I don't reach out to that many vendors to like jump on a call to talk about stuff. If I'm going to do that, it's because I really need help. Right? right? So we need help. And I think where we sometimes go wrong in our sales process is we act as though this person got up this morning and was like, oh, let me check out a fitness trainer. Like, no, that is not what happened. Right? Right. Like me with the jiggly, right? <laughs> it was like I probably was out of shape for quite a while. Right. right. Until that jiggly moment. And then I was like, no, I, this, I can't stand this. And I think I told you I hired a private Pilates instructor, right? All right. So um, it's very similar. But the thing I want you to connect with before you get on the call is that they've been in pain for a long time. And so that makes it easier at the end for you to say, well, hey, you know, Ellen, I've so, in, you know, I've really enjoyed getting to know you. And it sounds like you actually have some big reasons to you know, get in better shape right now. You talked about keeping up with your two-year-old. You said you're going for a promotion that you've lately, you know, you look at your notes, right? Exactly what she said. You repeat it back to her, right? That you're feeling out of shape, you know, whatever it is she said. If it was me, you'd been like, you didn't like the jiggly, right? So you reconnect her with that pain at the end. And then you just say, we're here now. Let's get you signed up. You know, like right. in a month, I want you to be telling me I feel in the best shape of my life and my two-year-old can't keep up with me. So let's <laughs> exactly. make this happen. Right? And if you bring that, like, no, we're doing this energy, often people will follow, right? It's right. not quite that easy, but if you bring that energy, it's going to increase your close rate like crazy. That's what I need, Julia. I'm telling you, I have a colleague in Oakland, California. I think I mentioned to you, they're called the Queer Gym. They have like a, a really high conversion rate and are earning close to $20,000 a month. I'm like ready to be there. Yes. Well, I think this is the last step is one, you got the method. It's not the last step. There's other things you need to figure out and you're in masterclass. So I have every faith you'll figure them all out. But the, in terms of closing, right? Because you can't take the sale out of scale, right? We talk yes. about that a lot here. So if you want to scale your business, you have to get better at sales and you can outsource it. Once you master this, you're going to be able to outsource it too. Right. right? It takes someone else to do this. Yes. So, um, but the part to master is at the end, really being connected with the fact that the highest level of serving this person, because you know in sales gear we're not really talking about sales, right? We're talking about serving them. Yes. If you really are serving people, helping them, you know, with their health. What could be more important than that, right? I mean, on days I don't feel good in my body, like the whole day shot, right? Like you're helping people with such an important part of their life. And so if you really channel Bianca at the end of that call, this person's life is gonna be way better if they sign up for me. And this is the important part, way worse if they don't. True. Right? Like when you and I got on that call and got to the end and you're like, well, let me think about it. Right? I know a thousand percent that one, if you get off this call, you're going to get all distracted. You're not going to sign up. Chances right. are very, very low that you're going to sign right. up and your life is going to be worse. 
<laughs> because you won't have joined a master class. You might, God forbid, go hire a competitor, and I can't speak for what they're going to do, right? We have women come to us all the time who've spent, you know, 10000 15000 on a coach, and they're like, yeah, it didn't do anything. I didn't get the results. Wow. That means me, right? So I don't want that to happen to you. I've now spent an hour on the phone with you. I'm all invested in your success. So the taking it down the line of really serving your client is to take them by the hand and coach them through, pull them yeah. through. Right, all the way to the end. Because if they get off that call, then they're not gonna get the results, right? Yeah. Very small chance that they're really gonna go do this work. And sometimes you can even say to people, like, well, let me ask you, you know, if they're like, oh, I'll have to check with my husband, blah, blah, right? You can be like, first of all, don't take that bait, right? Don't take the bait. Right. In the sense they're trying to get you off of your goal, which is to get them enrolled so you can help them. Yeah. Right? So don't take the bait. They say, oh, I check with my husband. Oh, when is the next one? All those things we get, right? And then you just say, well, let me ask you something, Ellen, right? Just right back onto her, her pain point. So let's say, you know, you don't enroll and then in a month, you're still feeling exactly that the same way you just told me you were feeling. What's that going to be like? Like, tell me a little bit more about that. Right. right? And she'd be like, well, if I'm still feeling this weak and tired, like, I'm not sure I can even keep doing my job, right? And yeah. then you're like, oh, well, so what would happen if you like lost your job? Well, I don't know who would pay the bills around here, right? And suddenly, like, the pain is greater, you see? And then it's like, yes. well, let's not let that happen, Ellen. Like, let's get you signed up right now. Right. Absolutely. You follow? I absolutely do, yeah. Um, one of the other things I was considering changing is instead of getting people on the phone, I wonder if I may be able to close more sales if we were to do a Zoom call. Do you have any opinion about that? I would use the group Zoom calls as a way of finding more leads back to your other question okay so i think you could do a group zoom call now that you've been on a bunch of these calls you've probably heard a lot of different questions yeah so you could do a zoom call like a webinar type thing where you answer the most frequently asked questions maybe it's got a cool title right like what would a cool title be i mean you came up with oh, a great name off the top of my head i'm not sure maybe like um i don't know fast fitness i don't know yeah, like fitness just something webinar. that might appeal to the very people who are reaching out to you, right? And then yeah. maybe it's like fast fitness without the fluff, right? Like just yeah. make it something a little provocative, right? Yeah. And then, because they'll think, oh, this sounds funny. What's this, right? So then they show up and then you, they can get to know you a bit. And from that call, people can set up calls. And right. you can also offer some kind of a discount, right? Like, and because sure. you're on this call, you get X percent off. But, you know, the pricing question is a good question. We don't have time to solve it today. But I do want you to go look at your competitors see if you're underpricing, especially the, the one on the West Coast you've been following. And, you know, it, it's really not so much about the pricing as about mastering the sales process, mm. right? And you might feel like, hey, if I'm going to spend all this time mastering the sales process, I do want to charge more per person, right? It might be right. time to raise the yes. pricing. And of course, to do the math of like, do I want to have, you know, a thousand people at $20 or a hundred people, right, at $2,000. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of different ways of getting to a million. That's true. So you could go, you could also look at your strategy and say, hey, wait a minute, I'm gonna need to sign up like a thousand people this year to get to a million. Maybe I want to change this, add in, who knows, maybe add in nutrition, add in something, right? right. To make it higher value and start charging people more. You know, grandfather these people you're working with now into some low dollar program and launch a high dollar version that could For get sure. you to a million faster. That's also possible. Yeah. I like that. I, I've got a, I've got a goal this year. I'm pretty close to making it next year. My goal, my revenue goals are quarter million and a couple of years down the line, I'll get to that million. I know I oh, you're totally going to get to that million. Yeah. But I think it's all about being intentional, right? Like mapping yes. it out in your projections, knowing you have a strategy to get there and doing exactly what you're doing, which is getting coaching, joining communities of women, also going big to learn best practices, and then mastering the skills that just still need a little bit of fine tuning, right? Like sales, nobody goes into business because they love sales and are great at sales. Well, except for maybe salespeople. <laughs> I will say I'm having a lot of fun with sales. I truly enjoy the connecting with people. I I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah. And do you think more so since the sales cure, since you have a method and you're not yes. anxious about like what's going to happen on each call? Yes. The sales cure has permitted me to enjoy the process as opposed to being intimidated. 
Oh, that makes me really happy. And that's yeah. what it should be, right? Because we go into business because we want to help people with something. Yes. And so each call is really, a, a, I consider it a privilege. Every call I get on is a privilege to get this window into someone's world, right? And what are right. they afraid of? And what are they excited about? And then, you know, if they're a fit, they'll sign up. That's the beauty of the sales cure. Once you master it, is every single call will just be about like, hmm, are they a fit? Right. Right? Because if they're not a fit, you're, nothing you say is going to get them to sign up, right? If she's dying to have nutrition as part of her program, right. and you don't have nutrition, she's not going to sign up. But you'll True. get there faster, right? Once you master this, you'll get there faster where you'll listen and you'll hear clues and cues early on in the conversation, right? Like if I hear a woman early on in the conversation saying, um, you know, I started this business because I really wanted to help people. And, you know, it's really not about the money. Like, I don't really even care about money. So I'm only making, you know... 75,000 a year, but that's fine for me because I don't really need much. I don't want much. Then I'm like, this person's not a fit. <laughs> right? Like, right. They're not hungry, right? They're, they're fine. They're fine where they are. So, okay, we'll keep the chat shorter. I need to save my time right. for people who are actually hungry, want to go big, and are in pain, right? Yes. That's it. It's like super simple at the end of the day for all of us. One of the things that I've been visualizing is I'm, I'm visualizing the day where we're on CEO check-in and I say, Julia, I'm a killer closer. The day is coming. I'm, I'm certain of it. Oh, I love it. And then you can be the guest and teach everybody else how to do it. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> That's so awesome. Well, Bianca, you're doing everything right. Just keep practicing. I love okay. that you have the post-its above your computer. That's a great hack. I haven't heard that one before. Thank you. And, um, you know, keep me posted and we'll see you back on here to hear how it's going. Yes, thank you so much, Julia. Have a great day. You too. Great Bye. to see you. Bye, Bianca. So Bianca is doing the brave, bold thing of figuring out how to sell better, which if you're just joining us here on CEO Check-In, I see my old friend David. Uh, nice to see you, David. Um, I think you're calling in from Barcelona, which is cool, unless you're back. David and I know each other from the Entrepreneurs Organization, and he moved with his whole family to Barcelona, just, just in time to be locked down there. But it does still look like you're having fun. Uh, but what we're talking about is scaling up through getting better at selling. Because so many entrepreneurs in our community come to us with these big dreams of getting to 500,000, 800,000, a million and beyond, but they don't yet have a sales process. They don't yet have a script for how they're going to talk to each potential customer. They haven't been trained in how to overcome objections. These are all very sales 101 things that if you've been trained in sales, come much more easily to you and don't scare you and you just tackle them. But if you haven't been trained in sales, as most people haven't, they can absolutely be the difference between you making 200000 this year and 800000 this year. So if you're watching and you listen to Bianca's story and you're thinking, okay, maybe I'm ready to learn sales, especially in this environment where it's a little harder to close, right? People are anxious about their jobs and their futures. So all you could do really is to get better at it because you can't change what's happening out there and the uncertainties in the world, but you can master a sales process that will give you the same kind of confidence and joy and relaxed feeling that Bianca's talking about when she's going on to those sales calls. So uh, maybe Maddie could put the URL. Um, Maddie's our chief of staff at Million Dollar Women. I saw her on here earlier. Put the URL for the sales cure. And because you're on this CEO check-in, we're happy to offer you the same discount that we give the women in our masterclass community, which is 30% off. It's not an expensive program. We created it to be DIY so that every woman can do it and super affordable. It's under $500 and you can complete it in three to five hours on your own time and you'll make that back in the first sale. I remember Bianca shared that she took the sales cure and got on a call and closed it. So that was exciting to hear about and we can't wait to see how she's gonna do with that. So anyway, great to have you guys with us. I will see you back here on Monday for CEO check-in and Wednesday if you wanna join us for our guest who is a venture capitalist and gonna be sharing how you can raise money even in these trying times. Oh, and Maddie, thanks for putting in your info there. She's just maddie at juliapim.com. And you can reach out to Maddie to take the sales cure. Great thing you can do even today to start closing more business today or tomorrow. Loved having you guys with me. I will see you soon. Stay brave and go big.